Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, exciting to be back. Uh, welcome back to everyone. Hope everybody had a good short summer uh, and uh, uh, ready to talk a little football. We uh, just finished practice five, so we had our first two days in, in just uh, helmets, and then the last three days have been in just upper pads. We haven't put on full pads yet. Uh, uh, that'll come tomorrow, uh, but it's been a, a good five days. Uh, getting acclimated to being out there uh, a little bit more than they are for uh, summer conditioning as well as uh, just our first glimpse at a lot of new players as well as um, you know just seeing what the retention is from some of our older guys from what they did in the spring and summer. But uh, excited about uh, where we're at. We've got a long ways to go, uh, but we're just evaluating every day to find extra guys, more depth that can uh, – uh, help us. We we know that we have a, a good amount of guys back at certain spots, but we have a lot of positions that are really up for grabs where there's really good competition and um, more competition uh, this year at a number of positions than we've had since I've been here. So uh, I know as a coaching staff, we're excited about maybe building some depth as well as having really good competition um, on a daily basis to uh, uh, push each other. So we'll open it up. Coach, have you I know you haven't had a lot of time with him, but have you seen anyone flash that maybe hasn't been a regular player so far? Uh, there's been a, a number of, of players. It's uh, you know it's so early. We won't. We haven't done any live situation uh, things. Um, you know, um, boy. I mean, there's a lot of guys. I'd leave a bunch of them out that have really done a nice job. And quarterback. I got to ask about Adrian. Mm -hmm. what, now that he's live and. You know, as terms of throwing the ball full yeah. time, uh, been really sharp. Um, he's done a nice job. He continues to learn what we're doing. Uh, I know that uh, he and Coach Klein and the and the QBs uh, sit with those guys in the morning, and I think just continuing to absorb more and more of the playbook and feeling more and more comfortable with uh, uh, the offensive scheme. But uh, um, seeing some really really good things, uh, throwing the ball, running the ball, and and getting us in the right play. Behind Deuce, where's that sit? It's wide open. Uh, I've been impressed with DJ Giddens. I, I think he's make, made a nice uh, step from where he was in the in the fall to spring, and now spring to uh, to this fall. Uh, I'm excited about him. We have some competition. Shippers is is still in there uh, doing some good things. Um, you know, junior college player uh, Anthony Frias that's in here that's doing a nice job. Uh, LaJames White's doing a nice job. We have a lot of depth there. We, we need to put those guys in, in really into the fire over the next two weeks to see how it's going to shake out. Do you have an update on Khalid Duke's status at this point? Um, yes, he. we're confident he's going to be set and ready to go for the first game. And um, we are being very smart with him. Uh, coming off the injury that he had, and then he had he missed some time for some other things, um, but he is uh, going to be on target to be ready to go on September third. No, you said safety was a question mark headed into fall camp. You're probably only twenty yep. thirty percent into it, but do you feel much better than practice one? Well, we have a lot of depth, and I'm excited about the competition. Um, you know, we're playing six seven guys back there in the three safety spots that. Uh, um, you know, I don't know if we'd have, we don't have an established depth chart by any means uh, at, at either the free, the stronger, or our middle safety, the jack. But um, lots of people are getting a look, um, and uh, some of the newer players that maybe just arrived here. You know, Drake Cheatham's one that just arrived. Uh, Kendra Stigger just arrived. Um, they're they're starting to get in the mix. VJ Payne's a, a freshman. Jordan Perry's a freshman, doing some really good things that are young guys. And then you've got a few of the older guys like TJ and uh, Sincere and, and Josh Hayes is, is an older guy but a new guy. So a lot of bodies back there, and uh, we'll see how it all uh, shakes out. Kobe Savage is doing a really good job back there. We're excited about seeing him make that big leap from spring, spending a ton of time in the summer of watching film and learning more and heading into fall. Is Will Honus, is he full go, and how has he kind of – I guess, absorbed the new system that he's playing. Yeah, it was good to get him in seven-on-seven seven, uh, during the spring um, so he could get acclimated to how we practice and some of the calls, and, and he's been cut loose, uh, and he's he's cleared to go uh, and sharing a lot of those reps. 
um, with Austin Moore. Both those guys are, are, are going to battle and, and both are going to play um, right now, but uh, excited about Will. Will's a really good football player. Coach, as far as the, the defensive system goes, obviously last year you made the transition full time. How much more confident are the guys in the in the defense now as opposed to a year ago? I think they're a lot more confident. I think they're more comfortable. Uh, I think they can f problem solve more than they could have last year uh, of things that uh, or plays and, and schemes that have been a problem for us last year. They're starting to understand and maybe bringing some uh, – uh, solutions to us, even as as coaches, uh, the communication you can is a, a lot better, which tells you that they do understand it pretty well. Um, but uh, there's a lot of guys that are brand new with that system too that we have to get integrated in understanding the stuff quickly. So, um, but the fact that we were full time with it in the spring and full time with it in the summer is giving guys a lot of a lot of comfort. And as far as Sean Robinson goes, I know originally when we had the press conference, you said that probably was going to play safety. He's listed on the roster as a linebacker. Kind of where do you see him fitting in, and how has he progressed? Yeah, in the spring we played him both spots. We played him at safety, and we played him at linebacker. And uh, the more we were able to evaluate him from watching all the spring tape uh, and being around him in the summer, um, we thought closer to the ball was better. And uh, so we've started him out at, uh, at linebacker. And he's been a really big, not not even a surprise because he's played football and he's an older guy, uh, but just um, his level of understanding has grown quite a bit from where it was in the spring to where it is now. And there's a lot of growth growth still left for Sean, but uh, very strong, very explosive, uh, extremely competitive, um, physical player that um, we're excited about. Last question I have for you is about Nate Matlack. Um, Last year, he really popped in his first true fire redshirt freshman season. What kind of have you seen from him as he's progressed, and has he put on muscle? Kind of, would you talk yeah. about him for a little bit? Bigger, stronger, um, more knowledgeable, uh, understands what we're doing. You know, added probably ten pounds of of weight as well as muscle, um, and uh, uh, we think he can have a real a real breakout year, especially with with Felix on the opposite opposite side drawing an awful lot of attention. It's really going to free up a number of players, but uh, uh, Nate's one of those guys that could be a big uh, benefactor of it. But Nate's uh, in really good shape and uh, bigger, stronger, and we're excited about what he's going to be able to do this year. RJ Garcia, still looking as good as he did in the spring, maybe yeah, even better. R RJ's um, picked up where he left off. He's a really talented kid that, for a young player, understands the game so well, um, has learned – from Cade, who uh, has been really sharp in helping him, and Philip and Malik, and excited because uh, RJ's in the mix. You know, he's in that top mix of guys that's going to play uh, a, a lot for us, and just got to continue to to refine his skills and and go up against you know Julius and Echo and some of our older guys. But uh, excited where RJ is. And how does that competition level shake out? You mentioned competition in different units. What about at wide receiver up and down the roster? Yeah, um, you know, our our top three really are, are back from ending the season. When when we lost Landry um, in the bowl game, you know, it was it was Cade, it was Phillip, it was Malik. Those were our top four with Landry. Landry gets hurt, so our top three really were back with those three guys uh, that um, I think are really seasoned guys that uh, know our system. Uh, are extremely difficult to cover, all have different skill sets, but all can play multiple spots, which I think is what you're looking for, is not a guy stuck, he's only a slot, he's only an outside guy, um, a boundary guy, whatever it may be. All three of those guys are really really playing well, and uh, our, that's one of the strengths of our team is our, is our wide receivers. Then you look at RJ and um, Keenan Garber and – uh, Ty Bowman and uh, Xavier Lloyd, Jaden Jackson. There's a lot of names. Seth Porter, I'm probably missing one. And there's a lot of names that are that are in that mix that are taking a lot of the reps with the with really the first couple groups. And does Deuce Vaughn fit into the picture in the slot quite a bit? Yeah, we're gonna move Deuce around. You know, everybody's gonna know where where he's at and game plan for him. So we need to be creative in in how we get him the football and. Uh, uh, whether that's in the backfield, whether that's in the slot, um, a lot of different looks probably to move him around. 
Um, and it's also going to open up Philip and Malik and Cade and some of the other guys as well. But, uh, uh, yeah, I think Colin and, and the offensive staff has done, have done a really nice job through four or five practices to find different ways to – it's it's all about creating matchups, you know, trying to get Deuce, uh, if he's not in the backfield, man-to-man on a linebacker or safety. And um, I think we've done a really nice job early on of just um, showing different looks and then – uh, motioning him or shifting him to different spots where uh, all of a sudden you get a bad matchup. On the injury front, um, what's your comfort level exiting the conditioning drills? Um, I thought Coach True uh, and his staff and, and uh, Scott Troush and nutrition and uh, Mindy in the athletic trainer training room, uh, all that, that, that support staff did a phenomenal job of getting the guys ready uh, for football. And now it's our job to get them – uh, ready for playing football as far as being out there longer and having pads on and the playing shape. But uh, there's, without a doubt, our kids are, are stronger. They're, they're faster. They they're have lean muscle mass because of the nutrition. We had a great setup this summer uh, with, our, with our players being able to uh, eat quite a bit and gain that muscle mass as well as uh, get stronger. It's fun to see. Now, it's our job as coaches that we don't um, – you know, wear them out the entire month of August and September, and we're not as fresh as we sh- as we need to be in October. We've made some uh, adjustments uh, to our practice schedule, adjustments to um, the amount of time out there, some of the different drills we're doing, so that we can try to stay fresher longer. And that's that's uh, something that everybody's trying to do. But um, we've kind of done a lot of research, uh, the sports staff and myself, to come up with ways for our guys. Um, to take care of their bodies better, to hydrate, have great nutrition, have great recovery so that they can bounce back and um, be able to stay healthy throughout the whole season. Last season with the extra linebacker spot you created with the new defense, at the beginning of the year you started with Khalid there, end of the year you used a lot of Reggie there. What did that whole experience teach you you can use at that spot? Uh, we need both type of bodies. I think that's a big thing. And last year we didn't have both type of bodies. Uh, and we went out and, and either recruited to that or moved some guys around in the winter and the spring so that we had the ability based on what the offense was going to do, whether they're going to go with big people um, with two tight ends, which we see an awful lot more of in this league, that we can have a, a true backer in there as well as uh, to some of the, the teams that will be more spread offenses, more 11 and 10 personnel uh, and throwing the ball around that we could go to a speed package out of it. We have to have both. Uh, and, and last year when Khalid got got injured, we really were stuck with just one way of doing things. And we've, we, we saw how people attacked us um, when we did it that way. And so we have to have an answer. That's something that we've looked at a lot <clears throat> as defensive coaches throughout the the spring and the summer is to create uh, um, some different schemes where um, if we get caught uh, with a smaller package with bigger people that we have some calls to make and vice versa when we have a bigger package out there with uh, uh, some of the you know 10 and 11 personnel sets. How much of a help would Khalid be if he's fully healthy in there this Well, he'll season? be fully healthy. I'm, I'm con- he's, there's nothing that he's being held back from. Um, but he he's just missed an awful lot of time. Uh, and so f- for us, some of the time that he missed, we're getting back now in, in August and making sure that he's in uh, tremendous shape uh, uh, physically, making sure that his, his, uh, his knee is back. Um, and uh, we want to make sure that we have Khalid for the long haul, not just for the month of September. And so um, he'll, be, he'll be ready to go, though, uh, early on in the season. I also want to ask about Adrian. Is there anything he's still learning um, as he makes the transition? Well, I think he'd tell you he's learning every day. Uh, that's the fun part of uh, the, you know, he was taking so many mental reps in the spring and, and trying to put himself in the position behind the cues and stuff of, of kind of watching as it goes. But now being able to have, you know, live action of seeing things come at you uh, and understanding how Coach Klein calls things. Um, it's a different deal out there right now when you've got Felix, Nate, uh, Pick, Dehance, Eli. None of those guys practice in the spring, so the pocket collapses a little bit uh, uh, more now than it did in the spring. So uh, it, it's that that speed of it has, I think, really been helpful for all of our quarterbacks and 
Um, you know, Will Howard's playing really well right now, doing some really good things. I, I think the combination of uh, Will and, and uh, Adrian leaning on each other and learning from each other has really helped as well. Um, as far as Felix is concerned, how, what, what are some of the bigger ways that you've seen him take a step forward from, from this um, You know, he was another one that had uh, uh, surgery at the end of the season, so missed all of spring ball. Um, so he's getting himself back healthy for starters, and, and we're smart with him because um, his was a, a, an injury that it takes time to heal, but he is he's healthy and ready to go. Uh, I just think understanding the game, uh, he's always had a great motor and played extremely hard and fast, and he learned from Wyatt Hubert in that um, and taken that to a, another level. Now it's just understanding the whys uh, of the defense and the whys of the offense, you know, you know, whether it's where the backfield set is to tight end alignments to um, where the ball's at on the hash to the middle of the field and um, seeing offensive tackles and guard sets and stuff. I just think he's so much uh, more experienced and uh, – he knows that people are going to have to turn the protection and stuff to him, and he knows that he's got to let the game come to him. He can't um, press on it. It's going to it's going to come to him. But I'm excited because I think Nate's really going to surprise some people. I I know that Khalid's healthy will will be a factor. Plus, with all the big guys we have inside, with with a healthy Eli D. Hence wasn't healthy last year. Pick wasn't healthy last last year. All those guys are healthy. Um, it's going to open up a, a lot of opportunities for, for Felix, and he'll get his opportunities there. And you were kind of touching on it already, but we, we didn't get to see a whole lot of Nate and Felix and Khalid on the on the field together last year yeah. when he got hurt. How how exciting is the prospect of having kind of all of those weapons kind of available to you? Yeah, it, one, it uh, keeps us fresh up front um, in crucial situations of late in the game in two minutes and – Gives us an opportunity potentially on third down to get them all in the game together. Uh, you throw those three in there, whether it's in a in a four down set with somebody like D or Pick or Eli, to create some good four man rushes, or have them all three in there and bring another linebacker, uh, or just let those three guys go and cover. Um, we're excited about uh, um, not only having those guys healthy now, but but sustaining that health and making sure that they can last. Uh, throughout the whole season, and part of that is our job of making sure that uh, um, we have enough rotation so that uh, we're not spreading those guys thin as well as other ones. Coach, when we talked to the four guys down in Dallas for media days, um, kind of felt the main takeaway, at least for me, was that they were kind of had a chip on their shoulder. They are out to prove something. How has the energy been uh, throughout the team compared to the past few years that you've been here? Well, we ended last season on a really high note with uh, – the 2021 team and, and uh, them, you know, stamping their legacy of of uh, the amount of time they put in at K State with, uh, you know, changing the uh, the locker room and culture from the pandemic, not not from anything in the past. Just we all had a struggle in 2020, and they, you know, they they changed the locker room, they changed the culture in 2021 uh, after going through that pandemic, and then capped it off with an unbelievable win. Uh, in the bowl game, and that was such a late game in January that we were turning around and starting back up in in early March. And um, yeah, our guys are excited about uh, maybe just scratching the surface of what we think we could have been and can be with that uh, really good win to end the season. Uh, but it, it carried over into our winter conditioning. We had great uh, uh, numbers in winter conditioning. Uh, had a really good spring, even though we were down some guys. Uh, and then that carried over in the summer. But you know, now, now it's all that stuff was not easy, but manageable because it was non-padded every other day in spring. Well, now it's it's tough because it's adversity every day. We're practicing, and there's no off days in between, or very seldom is there an off day. And we're rolling with full full gear starting tomorrow, and and had some upper pads on. It's there's some challenges, and guys are sore and getting getting hit and. Um, we got good players on both sides of the ball, so we've had competition days. Offense is one a day, defense is one a drill in, during the day. It flips back and forth, and I think that's that's something we need because I think it keeps that chip on there when they can. I don't at any position. Uh, our corners can beat the wideouts, wideouts can beat the corners, O line can beat the D line, D line can beat the O line. I think that competition is healthy, and we're trying to foster that competition every day. You've always wanted to have like a seven or eight guys on the offensive line ready to play. 
do you think you have that this year with KT and line game coming yeah. along? Yeah, um, we're sure hopeful that we are uh, excited about uh, KT. Um, been here a while, uh, matured. Uh, I think his best football is right now. Uh, Liney is going to be a really good player, just needs experience. Uh, but uh, with Liney and KT, it allows us to swing Beebs a little bit. Uh, really excited about where Hadley and, and Hayden Gillum are because they push each other at center, plus one of them can play guard and, and kind of give TP a blow a little bit. And um, Sam Hecht has done some really good things early on as a guy that we think can crack into that top seven or top eight and give us some reps as well. And so uh, over the next couple weeks, just finding the right mix and finding the right position so that uh, we stay fresh and get the best five out there on, on any given down. Do you feel as good about the depth at the nose as you did last year? Yeah, uh, I, I do. You know, we had Timmy Horn and, and Eli um, and D was D hence was kind of the new guy and now D's been around he's coming off of an injury Eli uh, I think I've said this I think he's one of the best defensive linemen in the big 12 um, coming back for a six year he's just so smart and such a savvy player and just gets the game be between Eli uh, and D hence um, we have Uso a junior college player Damian Alalio is gonna gonna help us um, whether or not it's early sometime because he's getting better uh, Cody Stuffelbean's an inside-outside guy, so we we have really good depth there. Could you break down just a little bit the the linebackers and where where they fit in and how many are kind of switching between? Yep, uh, Daniel Green and Nick Allen are playing mostly Mike. Um, they're exclusive guys, I should say, at, at Mike Backer. Uh, Bo Palmer uh, is also in the mix, and Bo's been in the program a few years now, and Bo. Be a really good special teams player and continuing to get better at linebacker. He's more of a swing guy between Mike and Will. Will Honus and Austin Moore are playing some Will linebacker. And then uh, Sean Robinson is playing Sam. Crew Jackson is swinging between Sam and Will. Um, Gavin Forche is playing Sam backer. Um, Desmond Purnell uh, is also playing some Sam backer. But Des, I think, will, will – have a huge impact on special teams as well as continuing to compete at Sam Backer. Um, those are just uh, a handful of names I, I think are, are really moving well and doing a good job. Tom Helton is a guy we moved over from wide out to linebacker uh, last spring, and it's helped him as far as special teams being so much better and more physical. He's put on weight, put on strength, um, and uh, I don't know if he'll crack the rotation in the linebackers because he's just moved over, but. Uh, Gives us another really big body at 215 pounds or 220 uh, that can be a really good special teams guy as well as be a backup linebacker. You got some experienced, talented cornerbacks coming back, but uh, is there anybody else there behind him you could see playing a little bit this season? Uh, I do. We're going to have to be able to play three, four, and five guys. The the one that jumps out at me that missed almost all of last year is Omar Daniels. Uh, Omar had an injury in fall camp last year and sidelined him most of the year, uh, got him back for bull prep, and he was kind of the emergency corner in bull prep. But uh, uh, he's a, he's one that I that has been in the system uh, quite a while that uh, is understanding what we're doing and will push um, Julius and, and push Echo. Um, Jordan Wright, new to the program. We're learning about him. Justice Clemens, new to the program. Uh, learning about those guys, they both are really good, skilled players. We just got to find out more about them as we get into competition. Um, uh, let's see, Jacob Paris has done some really good things. Colby McAllister, a true freshman, has done some really good things. Um, you know, we'll, we'll get into some uh, some situational situational situation situational uh, scrimmages and some different things over the next week to try to have some of those younger players, not only at corner but all spots um, to see how they react when the lights are on. I don't know. Don't have a don't have really a comment on it. it goes back to the chip on our shoulder. We we've got to earn that. We've got to earn our right to to have those accolades, but uh, um, nothing that we can control. We got to control what we can control, which is uh, on a daily basis, uh, being the best versions of ourselves and and uh, attacking every day at practice and getting better.
you mentioned DJ Giddens earlier and you talked about running backs. Can you go into just a little bit more in detail about what, what you like that he's done so much since he's been on campus? He's, he's a big physical running back that um, is learning how to play uh, college football. That, that's the biggest thing I'd say about DJ. It was really foreign to him when he first got here uh, and um, has taken him a little bit to understand the physicality that he has to play with, even though he's a big guy, uh, as well as understanding the playbook. Coach BA has done a really good job of, of trying to set some time aside to meet with him to go over some things so that he understands it better. Uh, and it looks like the game is starting to slow down for DJ. And we'll find out once we... Uh, put him in some tough situations, uh, but uh, we need DJ Giddens to show up and, and be a guy that can compete for that number two job. You mentioned that wide receivers are a strength of your team. How have you seen them adapt to Adrian Martinez as a quarterback? Uh, just the fact that those guys have thrown a lot in the summer, I think, helps. You know, we didn't get that opportunity in the spring, but in the summer, uh, the cues and the, and the wide receivers and tight ends have gotten together quite a bit. And uh, I think there's more and more of a, a connection and a comfort level. Uh, I see it on a daily basis. And just listening to the communication about where they're breaking things off or how they're seeing things. Um, when you get older guys at that position at wide receiver and a couple of experienced quarterbacks, you should usually get that. And that's what we're getting right now. I'm sorry. What's Coach Ward? He, he's done a great job. Uh, Coach Ward has uh, uh, come in here and, and uh, challenged the guys, um, brought a, a wealth of experience himself in here, um, and uh, brought some new things, new techniques, new drills to the table. And, and uh, I'm excited because uh, um, he challenges them every day. And uh, uh, I, I like it because they're responding and uh, they're having great dialogue. I can I can see it on the field, uh, hear it in the in the meeting rooms. Uh, they're having great dialogue uh, and learning more about each other. Um, and we need to be really really strong at wide receivers, and that's because of what we know people are going to try to do to us uh, of trying to slow down number twenty two. Our wide receivers have to come up big, and I think they will. Chris, I was curious if you might be able to address the leadership and what you see in the locker room so far and what the strength is of that? Uh, the strength is the fact that I think we've got close to 30 seniors, uh, varying from four to five to six-year seniors. We have a leadership council of 23 guys that uh, met with Coach True uh, every week in the summer and that I've gotten a chance to meet with a little bit more frequently uh, that um, uh, they're going to hold each other to the standard. And uh, – they know what the standard is. They know the expectation on a daily basis is to up, uphold that standard. And uh, we have as good a locker room as um, we've had since I've arrived. Um, never have had a bad one. We had a tough one in 2020, but that wasn't as much as it was the pandemic. But uh, um, we have a really strong group of leaders, and that's not just all seniors. There's a lot of seniors in there. There's some juniors in there. There's even some sophomores in there. Uh, that um, when you care about someone, you can hold them to that high standard because they know that they're um, trying to get the best out of you. And uh, uh, it's been fun to watch those guys challenge each other and grow. Coach Boffin, the coordinator and a new quarterback in the same year. You know, is Coach Klein excited to get to work with Adrian? Is there new options we could see with a new quarterback in his first year? Potentially, yeah. I mean, we're we're putting a lot of stuff in right now, uh, and uh, I know that Coach Klein's excited about the opportunity. I'm excited for him. Uh, it's uh, it's going to be um, really neat to watch him grow in the position and watch him take, you know, put his own spin on it, uh, take his own ownership, and uh, he commands the room. There's no question about that, and uh, the guys respond to him, not just quarterbacks, but everybody responds to him. We have a really good um, chemistry on that offensive staff uh, that I'm excited to uh, work with and, and see how those guys grow together.